Hello again, everyone. Week number four for the 1982 Blue Hen Football Report. Steve Turnberger with you here on Rollins Cablevision Channel 2. Tonight, you have a super treat. I know a lot of people out there did not get a chance to get up to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to see the Hens take on the Engineers of Lehigh. We have the game for you right here on Rollins Cable. In the next hour, you will see a great football game from Central Pennsylvania. The last drive was eminent. Blue Hen offense. They played great on that last drive. Rick Scully showed his prowess on Saturday afternoon. Before the ball game, I had a chance to talk to head scout coach Paul Billy on how the Hens could attack the Lehigh Engineers, a young ball club coming into 1982. Coaches, Lehigh ball club has had their problems this year. They lost to Maine, Colgate, and Pennsylvania last week up in Philadelphia. You saw them up there. Everybody's asking, what is wrong with this Lehigh club? Well, along with starting out with a real bad uh, season in here, 0 and 3. We've also got a bunch of injuries up there, and uh, I'm sure uh, that has certainly affected uh, uh, their play. Coach Lehigh lost a great quarterback receiver combo last year, Michalski and Ryan, and they've been able to replace those two ball players. Well, they don't they don't have that uh, combination this year. Uh, they've uh, had three quarterbacks in there, and they're they're still looking for that guy who can uh, who can have that Michalski uh, Ryan spark, and they don't have it right now. Semler has looked good uh, occasionally but he's thrown a few uh, interceptions. Uh, Rambo, his uh, backup, he's been injured off and on in there, so they can't depend on him, and they've got to have to go along uh, with uh, Horn, their uh, freshman uh, quarterback in there, and, and it's pretty tough to put a freshman in a situation like that and expect, uh, expect to turn that season around. Upset for game action. We'll take a quick timeout and come back right after these words. Tonight's game sponsored exclusively by Airport Toyota out on Route 13. We'll go to Taylor Stadium right after these words and see Lehigh versus Delaware come back right after this. Is Airport's Toyota's price-busting clearance sale on all new 1982 Toyota trucks in stock? Make your best deal on a new 1982 Toyota long bed, short bed, diesel, or 4x4 in stock, and Airport Toyota will give you a free cap valued at $500. For example, buy a new... Welcome to the Lehigh Valley, everyone. 1982 Blue Hen Football, Rollins Cablevision, bringing you on the road with the Blue Hens. Today we are in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for Lehigh University here at Taylor Stadium. Steve Turnberger with Bill Givens. And Bill, the Hens have not won here in Taylor Stadium since 1974. The engineers have beaten the Hens four out of the last five meetings. Tubby Raymond and all of Delaware want this ball game very badly. Steve, a very big game for Delaware. Revenge is going to be a major factor because most of these Blue Hens have never beaten Lehigh. But more importantly, Delaware must win this game to stay in the Division I AA playoff picture. The Hens with injury problems. John Kaysan, Cliff Clement did not play at all last week. Paul Brown, broken hand in practice on Thursday. He will not play today. And Ron Rossi at a left defensive end with ankle problems. He is very questionable today. He will not start in the ballgame. The Hens have been hampered with the backups with Merklinger and Phelan in the backfield. They're going to be tough on offense. The backups in the backfield did a great job last week, Merklinger especially. Defense is going to be a question mark. They're going to miss Paul Brown, but McGarver can get the job done. Big home field advantage here at Taylor. The, the fans come to watch this engineer ball club. They're 0-3 on the year, but a big advantage playing in Taylor Stadium. A partisan engineer crowd here at Taylor. No question about it. John Whitehead, the Lehigh coach, said when, T when Delaware and Lehigh meet, you can throw out the record books. It doesn't matter. It's a fierce rivalry, and Delaware better be ready for a good game. We're just about set. Opening kickoff, the Hens and the Engineers. Big ball game, fourth of the year for Delaware. We are set for game action. Captains at midfield, Rick Scully, number 14, Paul Brown, number 80, Joe Valentino, number 78. And you can tell Paul Brown with a broken left hand. It's a broken finger in his left hand, a middle finger for Paul Brown. He will not play today, obviously. And the Hens have some injury problems. Kaysan will play. He is injured, hobbled. Uh, Clement will not play at all. He didn't even make the trip. And Ron Rossi, left defensive end, did not make the trip to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The Hens with some injury problems. They need a big win up here at Taylor Stadium. Dave Mellick to kick it off for the engineers. Short kick. It's going to bound. Sager there, number 82. Sager will be run out of bounds around the 21-yard line of the Blue Hens. They will move it first and 10. In that backfield for the University of Delaware, Rick Scully will open a quarterback, number 14, the senior. At the left half will be Kevin Phelan moving from the split end spot. Remember, John Kaysan with a neck injury will not start today. The fullback will be number 47, Rick Titus. At the right halfback, number 32, John Merkler, leading ball club, uh, leading rusher last week against 
the Princeton University Tigers with Phelan. They both had 64 yards. Hammond will open at a split end, number 39. We should say Mike Lane, a junior split end, rotate out there with Hammond. First and 10, call hand. Scully gonna drop and go early. Right sideline, got him in out there. Hammond will overthrow him. Paul Hammond had his man beat around the Lehigh 35 yard line, but Rick Scully aired it deep. Incomplete a pass, it will bring up a second and 10 for the Blue Hands. Up front, Mark Steimer will open at the tight end. Tom Pescherin, 6'2", 228 pounder, is at left tackle. Doug Martin, your left guard, your center. Pete Mill at 6'4", 234. Right guard, Mark Malillo at 6'1", 247. And Randy Smith at 6'3", 236. Your right tackle, Doug Martin, is 6'2", 234, or 235 at the left guard. Steimer will set up in a tight end left. Hammond will split wide, right, second and 10, Blue Hens. This is Merkliner. John Merkler with the football, 20, 25. He'll pick up about four yards before he snowed under and run out of bounds at his 25-yard line. Jack Myers, left defensive end, coming over there to make the hit. 6'1", 231-pound senior for Jim Whitehead and company here at Lehigh. Third and five, Hens. Had their troubles early last week offensively against Princeton. Fullback Titus, Rick's got a first down. First down, Delaware, they'll move the sticks. And the Hens very, very eager to get out of Bethlehem this afternoon with a victory. Remember, they have not won here since 1974. Last time they beat the Engineers was down in Newark, Delaware. Delaware Stadium in 1979. That was a Division II National Championship ball club. Whitehead has a three and one record against Tubby Raymond and the Blue Hens. Scully option. Rick pitch. Phelan. 40, 45. Phelan with speed. 40 of Lehigh. He is still in play. Phelan cuts back and dropped at his 19 yard line. Great run by Kevin Phelan. Phelan moving from the running back position to the split end position early in the season. Injuries in the backfield. He has been forced to move back to a running back position, and Kevin Phelan comes up with a big carry there. Coming into the ball game, Phelan had 76 yards, a 4.0 average on the season. His longest run before that was the 13-yarder last week against Princeton. First and 10 hands just inside the Lehigh 19. Merkliner, Titus, Kaysan now in the ball game, relieving Phelan. John Ware's number two. Titus breaks a tackle. He'll bounce inside the 15. They'll mark him at the 14. Gain of about five for Rick Titus. We'll call it second and five. Second and five hands. Kaysan remains in there. Remember, he has had neck problems. Injured in the Temple ball game. John gets upended. Ooh, that won't help the neck any. He landed on top of his helmet. He lucky to gain a half a yard. We will still call it Second and a short five. Kaysan will check out. Remember, he did not play at all last week against Princeton, as well as backfield mate Cliff Clement. Clement with back spasms all week. He was in the infirmary most of the week. Got out on Wednesday. They thought he could play this week, but he will not today. Reader in there to fullback. Scully gets hammered. Rick Scully unloaded. Pearson, outside linebacker, 6'3", 221-pound junior. And the Hens will have to rely on Casey Knobloch to get an extra uh, field goal here with 11.48 left first quarter. The wind is blowing right to left. Knobloch, it's going to be a 34-yarder. Casey, high snap for Maley. Long enough. Got it. KC Knobloch, 34-yard field goal. The Hens on top, 3-0 with 11.30 to play here, first quarter. Knobloch, nice kick at the engineer goal line. Good defensive effort. Who's in there? Mike Harris, number four, was down there early. And also number 57 for the Blue Hens, that of course, 
a backup linebacker, Wagner. Chris Wagner, number 57, and on the hit. The engineers, first time they have seen the football this afternoon, they will move it first and 10. Steve, that last hour drive, eight plays, three and a half minutes, now about connecting on a 34-yard field goal. Semler at quarterback, a sophomore. They've had trouble at the quarterback position all year. Semler over the middle, had a man, but a little bit short for his tight end, Jeff Hunt. Jeff Hunt, 6'5", 220-pound junior. He'll wear number 85 and work out of that tight end position for the engineers. Your split end is Ken Jones, number 21, 6'3", 195-pound junior. At quarterback, Tony Simler, 6'4", 181-pound sophomore. His backup, Martin Horn, 6'3", 190-pound freshman. Engineers at 0-3 on the season. They have lost to Maine, Colgate, and Pennsylvania. God bolt. We'll break a couple tackles and pick up a couple yards on the play. Let's call it a second and I'm sorry, a third and long eight. Right sideline. Simler's got a man. Davidson in there at a split end for the engineers. Jim Davidson, sophomore, split end, 6'1", 182-pounder, and the engineers have their first first down of the ball game. 10.45 to play here. First quarter action ends by three. I'm trying to set that Delaware defense. Remember Gannon and McGarva at the defensive ends. Aisler stacked up and dropped. John Aisler, he's the fullback. 6'1", 245 pounder. It's John Gannon, Joe Valentino, Jeff Howdenshield, Dave McGarva up front. Witherspoon, Robertson, Riley, the backers. Fumble. Engineer is very, very fortunate to get back to football. That's gonna bring up a third down play for Lehigh. Third and 20 after a delay game penalty. Similar in trouble. With running room, gets around with his boot and runs out of bounds. New Frock, or sorry, Rita out there, number 20. Lou Rita will run Tony Simler out of bounds, and that will bring up a fourth down. The engineers will have to kick away the football. Back deep for the hens, Kevin Phelan honing in on a couple of career records here at the University of Delaware. Nice kick, high spiral. Phelan will grab at his 48, dance inside Lehigh territory, and be dropped. Titus, Merkliner, Phelan in the backfield. There's Merk in motion. Quick pop for Titus. Rick will drag people to the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four. Bring up a second and six. Remember, this series began back in 1912. Delaware leads it currently 20 to 13 over the Engineers, but Lehigh has beaten Delaware four out of the last five meetings. They did not play in years 76 and 77. Remember, Lehigh won a national championship in 77. Phelan trapped in his own backfield, but he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and six. Hammond split wide left for Rick Scully. He has Steimer, his tight end right. Lillo setting up for Scully. Rick will dance with a few people and get carried in his own backfield. Rick drops back at the 45, his own 45, and Rick Titus will have to come on to make his first punt of the ball game. Rick Titus to kick it away. No snap, but the engineers are not rushing. Titus is going to have to turn it up, and he's going to be run out of bounds at his own 47 yard line. Engineers with great field position. Jim Davidson will split wide right. He's the split, in, uh, the split end in there. He's also the backup. Similar, got him. That's Davidson. Rita with a big stick. But Davidson with a first down. Jim Davidson, 6'1", 182 pounds, sophomore. A lot of young ball players on this Lehigh club. Remember, they lost to Maine 14 to six, lost to Colgate 21-14, lost to Penn 20 to 17. Whitehead, very frustrated. They have lost a lot of close ball games. Godbolt. Godbolt will reach the 30. Robertson there, number 56, along with Sean Riley, number 58. We now move to further action six plays later. 
Third down and nine for Lehigh from the Blue Hen 19. Similar straight drop. Got time, got a man open. Nice play out there by Newfrock, number 10. That's Aisler, John Aisler, number 46, the fullback. He will be well short of first down yardage. Lehigh will have to kick a field goal here. Jim Scott, a junior, will do the booting. Good snap, good hold. Scott has got it up against the wind. Yes. That ball fluttered and fluttered. Looks like it was going to be pulled wide right. But Scott gets three on the board for the engineers. We're tied at three with 3.02 to play first quarter. The second quarter started with both clubs failing to sustain drives with pickup action. Delaware first and 10 at their own 45. Kevin Fable coming into the ball game needed 112 yards to claim the yardage career record here at the University of Delaware. Kickoff returns, he has 35 in his career, four shy of the record of 39. And 38 more yards on kickoff returns, Kevin Fable will be the all-time leading kickoff returner in Delaware history. Great all-around back, great all-purpose runner for the hands. Scully rolling on play action. Got a man, Kaysan, John with some room, nice block out there, and John will just go out of bounds at the 45, close to first down yard. It's Paul Hammond was trying to help out John Kaysan out around the 45, and it will be second and short, Blue Hand. Second and short, Delaware. Scully will dive, he has first down yardage inside the 45 yard line of Lehigh. First down. Rick Scully, top rusher at the quarterback position in the last decade for the Delaware Blueheads. Thus far, Rick has rushed 34 times for a total of 81 yards. He has lost 74 yards, so a net of only seven yards for Scully, but the important stat is there, 81 yards on rushing carry. Scully option, little pitch to Kaysan. John's got speed, John Kaysan slashing into the Lehigh secondary and Kaysan will have first down yardage at the 28. John Kaysan finally cut loose out of that Delaware backfield stable. Remember, Kaysan was injured last week. He got injured up at Temple, did not play at all last week, didn't even suit for the Princeton ball game, but John Kaysan has looked strong here against Lehigh. Play blocking by Mark Steiner to spring Kaysan loose, pick up a 14 yards. John, 5'11", 185-pounder out of Philadelphia, Roman Catholic High School. Play action, Chris Cross, Hammond, Paul inside the 15 at the 12. First and 10 hens. Rick Scully with good play action in the backfield. Threw a bullet to Hammond and Paul makes the reception. First and 10 hens, they're on the move. First and 10 from the Lehigh 12. Merkliner, motion, Scully. Corner, got Hammond, Paul, can he stay on his feet? He'll slip and go out of bounds. Inside the five, he looks to be short of first down yardage. It should bring up a second and about one. Rick Scully has caught fire here. Midway second quarter. We are tied at three apiece. Peter Mill, 6'4", 235 pounds center. Pat McKee is in there from the low level at a right guard spot. Kaysan up over the top, touchdown. John Kaysan with a three yard hurdle. And the hands go back on top, 9-3. Casey Knobloch to do the kicking. Knobloch, 9 of 9 on the season. And he hits his 10th consecutive. Hens lead it, 10 to 3, roughing the kicker penalty against Lehigh. That will be tacked on to the Ensuing kickoff, your score, Delaware 10, Lehigh 3, 11.44 to play, second quarter. A 15-yard roughing the kicker penalty on the extra point, Knobloch. The Lehigh 45 onside kick, Lehigh's got it. Flag on the play. 
after a 15-yard penalty against the hands Lehigh with great field position in Delaware territory at the 48. Simler. Has Davidson split wide left. Gunning over the middle, picked off Smith. George Smith with the football at the 30 and dropped at his 30-yard line. Big INT for George Schmidt. First and 10, Delaware. Their second turnover. Their second turnover taken by off of Lehigh. Scully, here's the option. Rick can do this with great speed. Scully down the sidelines. One man to beat. He gets knocked out of bounds. Rick Scully with the speed. First time we've seen Rick break a long one. O'Hagan barely knocking Scully out of bounds. Hammond split in right. Kaysan motion. Fullback Titus. Rick Titus will fall for a couple of yards. Shigo in on the hit. Middle linebacker. John Laub will check in at a left tackle spot. Law been there for Tom Pesherin. He's had diabetes most of the season. Finally getting his strength back. Scully will set, fire, incomplete. One in Kaysan. We have a flag on the play in the Lehigh secondary. Pass interference against Delaware. Offensive interference against the Blue Hens. They will move it back 15. Third and long, Kaysan, quick pop. John will dive to the Lehigh of 40. And the Hens will have to give up the football here. Rick's had a good year playing the football. All time average in a season at Delaware. It's gonna squib, can't get there. Or did he? Barney Acevedo with a great play on the specialty teams for the Delaware Blue Hens. Lehigh, first and 10 from their own two. Trail, 10-3. Nothing doing there. Right side of that Delaware defense. Robertson coming from the linebacker spot. Howden Shield there. Nose of the football is short of the two yard line. Simler. He's gonna throw out of his own end zone. Simler steps up in the pocket, got running room, 5, 10, first down Lehigh. Simler with speed, 20, run out of bounds, and it's 23. And Smith with a big hit over there. Lehigh failed to sustain the drive, so they punted back to Delaware. First and 10 hands. They were very impressive in their last drive. Steimer in the tight end left, Kaysan in the wing left. Here's Phelan in motion. Kevin will turn it up. Kevin Phelan with four or five speed, 30, 35, breaking tackles and thrown out of bounds at his 38. 18 yard pickup for Kevin Phelan, first and 10 Blue Hens. Raymond, 139 victories, 44 losses, two ties in his 17th year. Looking for his 15th consecutive winning season. Only Grambling has more with 22. Scully, here's Kaysan, John. Just clipped down before he could turn the corner. Shigo again. 54, Shigo has played very well at the middle linebacker spot. Bring up a third and about five. Kaysan picked up two yards on the play. About 13,000 on hand here at Taylor Stadium. Nice old ballpark up here in Beth Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. 450, second quarter. Fumble, Lehigh's got it. Lehigh football at the Delaware 33. First and 10 engineers, Martin Horn, freshman, 6'1", 190 pounder at the controls. All kinds of time, got a man down the middle, a little overthrow, picked off, George Schmidt. Acrobatic interception for George Schmidt, his second of the ball game, third of the season. He now leads the Blue Hens in that department. Steve, not that bad of a pass. Martin Horn on his first play from scrimmage was looking for Davidson deep, but a great catch by George Smith. And Steve, once again, the Delaware defense comes up to the challenge. The Blue Hens failed to move the football, so they punt into Lehigh. Martin Horn, 18, will remain in a quarterback. Once Davidson got him. Good ball out there to Jim Davidson. 
Martin Horn to Davidson. This Lehigh club is going to be strong next year. A lot of young players on the ball club. They had 10 starters returning this year, seven on offense, but remember, Michelski and Ryan both lost. Jim, uh, John Whitehead has a good ball club coming back for next year. They play Army and Navy next year. Horn, gun, is going to be picked off now. I think Riley got a hand on the football. Sean Riley, outside linebacker, number 58. And that will bring up a third and a short four for the engineers. 151 to play second quarter. Next week, Lehigh will travel to Stores, Connecticut to take on the Connecticut Huskies. Looks like a fake and go. Horn in trouble. Got a man first down. This is Hunt. Jeff Hunt carrying people to the Lehigh 42. We saw a lot of poise from Martin Horn. Only a flash. The stands rattling here at Taylor. 120 left. Horn set up. Gun. Got his man. In the Blue Hen territory, Robertson and Schmidt on the tackle. Ben, uh, backup split end, number 47 in there to make the catch. He split out wide left. Davidson out of the ball game. La Selva is split wide right. Ford, spoon on a blitz. Hunt, yes or no? Yes, oh, what a catch. Ben, number 47, with a great catch. You wonder where he came from. He is not on our roster. Timeout, Lehigh. They have a shot, 105, second quarter. Hens lead 10-3. Good football game. Hands up. Horn, setting up, all kinds of time. He'll gun, pick off. Schmidt had it, lost it, flag. Riley was down there with Ben again. Let's check the infraction. Go against Delaware. Lehigh will have another first down with great field position. First and 10 engineers. We have a tussle in central PA. Davidson split left, God bolt. Quick draw for the Lehigh engineers, surprised the Blue Hens momentarily. God bolt, he'll pick up five yards, bring up a second and short five. Engineers will go without a huddle. They have two timeouts with 40 seconds to play second quarter, Hens 10. Engineers three. Horn will set up over the middle. Touchdown. Hunt. Jeff Hunt was camouflaged one yard in the end zone. Newfrock was there. Maley was there. Martin Horn, a freshman, and we could be tied at halftime. Jim Scott to attempt the extra point. He can tie it at 10. Good snap, good hold. Yes. Hens 10, Engineers 10. 34 seconds to play, second quarter. We have a football game. Stay with us right here on Mount Cable Channel 2. There's no for the scoring in the first half. Ended Delaware 10, Lehigh 10. KC Knobloch to open the second half of play. La Selva at the 20. La Selva's room, 25-30, got some speed. Chop down, loose football. Hens got it. Delaware football. Palowski jumps out of there with the football. First and 10, Delaware. Steimer, tight end left, case side and wing left. Fullback is Titus, right half is Phelan. Option, Scully lost it, Lehigh has it. Recovery of a Rick Scully fumble. Rick got, he got bulldozed what happened at the 37. And it'll be a first and 10 Lehigh. They will move it from there. Two quick turnovers. And we're right back where we started. First and 10 Lehigh, just underway, third quarter. We are tied at 10. A pair of field goals for each club in the first quarter. Delaware came back on a Jay, uh, John Kaysan touchdown run. And then Jeff Hunt took a Martin Horn TD pass late in the second quarter. And that's where we stand at 10 apiece. Horn, rolling, setting, gunning. Guy bolt inbounds at the 41. Called second and a short four 
for the engineers. 0 and 3 on the season. They have had their trouble this year. Lost at Maine 14-6. Here at Colgate 21-14. Last Saturday at Franklin Field to the Quakers of Pennsylvania 20-17. Delaware at 2 and 1. Blew out Western Kentucky 31-0. Lost to Temple 22-0 and beat Princeton last week. Picked off. This is Sean Riley. Look at his speed on Riley. 58 from the 30. 25. 20. God bolt will drag him down inside. Lehigh territory at the 17. Sean Riley, junior linebacker. Sean Riley, a junior. First or third INT of the season. Phelan battling inside the 15 to the 14. Sean Riley had two interceptions previous to that. One against Western Kentucky in the opener and one last week against Princeton. Riley, six foot, 200 pounder. He was sixth in tackles last year with 45 as a sophomore. Steimer, Mark has not caught a football this afternoon. Fullback Titus. Titus on the carry. Rick will pick up a couple yards. Remember, next week we'll be in Amherst, Massachusetts. If you can't make the trip, join us here on Rollins Cable Monday and Wednesday, 8 o'clock. 82 Blue Hen Football Report, third and five hens. 13 minutes, third quarter. Case sign at the 12, snowed under. And the hens well short of first down yardage. Casey Knobloch will come on to attempt a field goal. They will mark it. At about the 18-yard line, we will call it a 28-yarder. Kaysan cannot pick up the first down, thanks to left linebacker Jim Salatelli. Knobloch, a 34-yarder to open the scoring. He missed another one late in the second quarter. Good old Knobloch. Has the distance? No. KC's had trouble this year. Both of his misses this afternoon have been very, very close. With your score, Delaware 10, Lehigh 10, 12.43 to play, third quarter. For it's Gannon, Valentino, Howden Shield, McGarva up front, Robertson, Riley, Withers. Martin Horn has played very well as a freshman, 6-3, 190. We'll move to further action in the same Lehigh series. Valentino hobbled with injuries through the first three hen games. Has played very well all season. Horn over the middle, got a man. Great stick by Maley, loose football. Lehigh got it back or was it dead? I believe it was blown dead at the 41. Jim Davidson went up, made a circus catch. Maley laid the wood to him, but it'll be a first and 10 Lehigh at the hen 41. Steve, you can't blame Maley there. Just a great pass from Martin Horn to Davidson. Davidson, a great catch. Just inside the hen 41. Lehigh on the move, 11 minute mark, third quarter. We are tied at 10. Stay right where you are, right here on Rollins Cable Channel 2. This game will go to the wire. They always do up here in Bethlehem. Hens have not won here since 1974. Horn in trouble, scrambling, got some room. Horn breaking a couple tackles, and he'll be dropped at the 29. First down for Horn. Only a freshman coming in here. Martin Horn was 14 of 27, one interception and two TDs. At the 30, Godbolt. Ed will get three yards. Got second and a short seven. 9.54 o'clock moving, third quarter. Horn with Aisler and Guy Bolton is backfield. Horn down the sidelines, got a man out there, six. George Schmidt got beat, Lehigh lead 16-10. First lead in the ball game for the engineers. George Schmidt was there, he just got hung up, turned around, and before he knew it, Ben had six points. Davidson to hold for Jim Scott. Low snap, Davidson gets it on a tee block. Who got a hand on the football? Pierce was there, number 91. 
and that could be very important in the outcome of this ball game. 9.40 to play, third quarter. Delaware trailing 16 to 10, the engineers on a comeback. After the ensuing kickoff, the Blue Hens failed to move the football, so Rick Titus set up and kicked the second longest punt in Delaware history. Godbolt, along with Shrek. Titus, good kick, Rick. Good kick by Titus, gets a bounce. 15, 10. At the eight, Acevella. Go down the football, Lehigh in trouble. At their own eight, they'll move it first and 10. Cannon, Valentino, Haddon, Shield, McCarver. Riley, Robertson, Witherspoon, Newfrock, Pulowski, Maley, and Schmidt. Not sure what the problem is with Lou Reed at number 20. Has not played in the second half. Horn sets. A lot of time. Hangs in the pocket. Got his man punt. Tight end. Punt was up near first down yardage. And the hens buried him back to the 15. Looks like a first down for Lehigh. Steve, it's unbelievable that Horn is just a freshman the way he's playing. Coming into the game 50% on the year. In this game alone, he is 10 for 13, and he is picking the Delaware secondary apart. Delaware has not beaten Lehigh since 1979 when Scott Bruner led the hens to the Division II National Championship. Engineers have won four out of five against Delaware. Horn in trouble, got his man, punt. Martin Horn, I'm sure the hen viewers at home wondering why Whitehead did not start Martin Horn. It's been a seesaw battle between Horn and Tony Semler most of the season. But obviously Martin Horn has been the man of the hour here in the Delaware contest. 14 to 27 coming into the ball game. A couple of interceptions, one TD. Remember, he's only a freshman, 6'3", 180 pounds. God bolt, 30, cuts back, 35. Flag on the play. Face mask against the hands, I believe. Valentino and Robertson made the hit. Personal foul, late hit Delaware. We move to further action in the same Lehigh drive. 16 to 10, the engineers. Horn to Ben, the last score for Lehigh. Extra point was blocked. A lot of people up front for Delaware. Pitch, Godbolt. He'll turn it up, flag on the plate, Godbolt will move. 30, 25, 20, Witherspoon knocks him out of bounds at the 15. The penalty was against the Hens. Lehigh declines. First and 10 from the Delaware 14. Horn wants it in a hurry, rolling. Witherspoon chasing Ali, can't get there, pass, little short. Newfrock, good coverage on Jeff Hunt. I'm sorry, that's Owen Brand, number 17. Brand in there for New Frock, but good coverage on Hunt, and that will bring up a second and 10. 3.45, third quarter. Horn. Play action, option. Horn's gonna get buried, almost lost the football. Gannon there, left defensive end. John has played a good ball game. Witherspoon also in on the hit. That will bring up a second down. And about nine. Four yard loss for Horn. Ben splits wide right. He's in there for Davidson. Hunt is the, deep, uh, the tight end on the left side. Witherspoon coming. Horn in trouble. Got a lot of room out here with some blockers. He'll set up. Pawlowski wants it. He'll get him. Jim Pawlowski with a good effort. And that will bring up a fourth down. Delaware's defense, again, stymies this Lehigh offensive attack. Scott will attempt to convert his second field goal. Davidson to hold, they will spot it at the 17, we'll call it a 27 yarder. High snap. Scott flags in the play. Kick is good. Penalty against the hands. Lehigh, defensive the field goal, 27 yarder for Scott. 243 left. Third quarter. Engineers 19 and 10. 
We have 15 minutes to play from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Hands down by nine, third and 15. Merklin out, motion left. Deflected, pick off. Flag on the play at the 45 yard line. Mike O'Hagan pick off the football, but the hens are gonna get it back. Big holding penalty against Lehigh. Blue hands get back to football. Mark on their chop down. He'll pick up a pair. Call it second and eight. Mike O'Hagan picked off that deflected football, but it all went for naught as the hands regained possession. Second and eight from the Lehigh 38. 1435 fourth quarter. Hens trailing 19-10. Delaware has not scored since midway second quarter on a John Kaysan touchdown dive. Skelly play action. Going deep down a sideline's ball. Hammond can't get it. Flag. We have a flag at the 18 and almost assured that this one's gonna go against Lehigh. It will, it'll go against the engineers. It will be a first and 10 Delaware with great field position. You can't say that Delaware hasn't had the breaks. They picked up some big ones here. First and 10 at the 24. Steimer tight end left. Hammond is split wide right. Here's Phelan, Kevin will cut it up with some room. 20, diving to the 18. Kevin Phelan, twisting and spinning. He'll pick up six, but second and four. Lehigh, Delaware, great tradition in Eastern college football. They have been going at it since 1912. Hammond, split wide right, failing motion. Watch for Kevin to circle in the end zone. Scully, going down the right sideline, is failing six, yes! Kevin Phelan. Going for a motion left to right. He just swung into the far end zone. Rick Scully hung that one perfectly for six points. Delaware's back in the ball game, 19 to 16. Steve, you called it as soon as Phelan went in motion. Delaware's had success with that play throughout the season. And great execution. Rick Scully right on the money. He's had his problems in the first three quarters. But that right there could be the play of the game. Big extra point. Ferguson to snap. Maley's got the hold, not block has got the kick. Hens looking much better at the 13-30 mark, fourth quarter. Delaware still trails 19 to 17. We now move to further action late in the fourth quarter. Delaware still in trouble. Lehigh first and 10 at the Hen 46. First and 10 Lehigh. Godbolt with room. Ed Godbolt inside the 40. All the way down to the hen 39. Delaware has two timeouts. Ben split wide left. Howden Shield made the hit on Aisler. But Aisler very close to first down yardage. Gonna bring up a third down. Third and one. Garva. Howden Shield, Valentino, Gannon up front. Riley Robertson with a spoon to backers. Godbolt, did he get it? All depends on the placement. They have to get to the 37 yard line for first down yardage. Big measurement here. They stretch it out and Lehigh's gonna be short. That's the distance. Fourth down and Whitehead is gonna punt, we think. Lev game penalty moves it back five yards. O'Hara from his 42. They'll boot it at the 50. Phelan will let it go over his head. Let's see the bounce. Lehigh bounce, out of bounds at the three. Santangelo ran it out of bounds. I think it was going out on its own. Delaware on its own three yard line with 137 left. A miracle has to be in the back pocket of Tubby Raymond. Scully. He's been here before. Titus, Kaysan, and Phelan. Rick's gonna set up, going to the sidelines. Got some room. Hammond's gotta get out of bounds. Yes, he will. 
Oh, did a little spin move there. Wanted to turn it back upfield, but then saw the heat and got out of bounds. First and 10, Delaware. 1.30 left. Mark Steimer back in there at a tight end. Lob is at a left tackle, number 68. Rick, straight drop. Go set up and go down the right sideline. Got Phelan out there thrown out of bounds, and Phelan goes down hard. On the Delaware bench, we got a flag way over on the far sidelines. Got to think it's against Lehigh. Check the call. Holding Lehigh. Five yard holding penalty, automatic first down for Delaware. First and 10 from the 18, Scully. Sideline, nice grab, got out of bounds to stop the clock, that's Hammond. Paul Hammond, a junior out of Concord High School. Great sprinter, played football for the Red Raiders in his junior year. Played well today up here at Lehigh. 102, one minute. He did not stop the clock there. Ends with two timeouts. Fans getting fired up at Taylor. Scully needs a big one block. Ramirez gives the end hopes. Ramirez did not start the ball game at defensive end. Could have been the biggest pass deflection of his career. If you're just joining us, this is the story. Delaware came in here with high hopes. They have lost four out of five games to Lehigh. They led 10-3 and half scored. Lehigh went up 19 to 10. Delaware has come back to score 19 to 17. We are under a minute in Pennsylvania. Hammond can pull it out of bounds. Yes. At the 40, first and 10 hands. That was a third down play for Delaware. I don't think he got out of bounds. Of course, they stopped the clock to move the chains. They're gonna set him down. Rick Scully's gotta get his club out of the huddle. Timeout Lehigh. Tubby Raymond with Ted Kemsky. This is it. 43 seconds left. Hens in pretty good position here on a first and 10 at their own 40 yard line. They still have two timeouts. Scully on a drop. Rick over the middle, got his man Hammond. Hammond, can he get out of bounds? Yes, he can, breaking tackle. Paul Hammond down to the 30. Crowd on its feet across the way in the Delaware stands. Rick Scully, he has been criticized throughout his career at Delaware. He has played great at times, had problems at other times, but if he wins this one for Delaware, it will be a big, big football victory. 33 seconds at the Lehigh 32. Scully's going to the air again. Sidelines a little strong for Paul Hammond. Got to feel Rick just aired that one up and over the sidelines to stop the clock. Kemsky, Raymond, and the coaches up in the booth get a chance to sit down and talk things over here. 29 seconds left. Football here on Rollins Cablevision Channel 2. Blue Head Football Report. We've had some great ones for you in the past. So glad you could join us right here. Titus is hammered. Ramirez, 91 on the stop. 22 seconds. And the Hens lost a second on the clock there. They dropped it back to 21. Delaware takes a timeout. 21 seconds left from Bethlehem. Scully at the Lehigh 29. He has a third and eight. Rick on a straight drop. Titus trying to give him a block. Got a man, Hammond. 15 gets out of bounds. Oh, baby. We got a ball game in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You got a couple minutes. Get to the phones, call your friends, tell them to turn into Rollins Cable, Channel 2. That's good luck. His longest in his career at Delaware, 47 yards. That is not a criteria right now. They are at the 14 of Lehigh. 13 seconds left. They have one timeout left. Scully's going to go in the end zone. Over the middle. Flag on the play in the end zone. Interference against O'Kagan. 
This is the ball game for Delaware and Lehigh. Bill Maley will put it on the tee at the Lehigh 14. We will call it a 24-yarder. Bad snap, Maley's got a scramble, he's got some room. Bill Maley, what's he gonna do in the end zone? Incomplete! Oh my goodness, what a football game. One second on the clock. Mark Steimer caught the football. Bedlam has broke loose in Bethlehem. Bill Malley made an heroic effort to scramble off the tee, and he hit Mark Steimer. The two played together in high school at Newark High. Malley was a quarterback, Mark Steimer was a tight end, and he just fell out of the end zone. Now something you gotta think about here, one second left, does Delaware get another chance? That was a third down play. Good point. I think KC's got another shot here. That was a third down. Just a basic play. He did not kick the field goal. Now, if he would have missed the field goal, obviously he does not get another shot. You are seeing NCAA collegiate football at its best. University of Delaware hen style. This is it. Maley. Now we got some pressure. Last play of the game, one second left. Maley gets it on a tee. Now block kick is up. Good! Hens have done it! What a comeback for the Delaware Blue Hens! We will let the crowd let you know what's going on in Bethlehem. It's gonna be a nice bus ride for the Blue Hens. Oh my goodness. This booth was shaken when KC Knobloch hit that one. What a victory for the Delaware Blueheads. They finally break the jinx against Lehigh. They have not played up here in Taylor Stadium. They have not won a game up here since 1974. Lehigh had won four of five coming into this ball game. Big win in Bethlehem. Hands 20, engineers 19. Week number five, the Hens traveling up to Amherst, Massachusetts to take on the Minutemen. And Coach Billy, I know a lot of fans remember a couple years ago, a sophomore quarterback, Rick Scully, hitting a beautiful touchdown pass late in the ballgame. I know the Minutemen are going to want to get a hold of the Hens at home. They're certainly looking for some revenge up there. Uh, they had returning uh, Gary Pearson, who uh, in that, up prior to that game up there and prior to our game last year, was uh, averaging almost 100 yards per game, and we kind of stopped him. And uh, they've got returning two quarterbacks, McGrath and Pekovic. Uh, and so there's a lot of experience at quarterback, and there's a lot of experience at running back. At home again, last week the plans, uh, Hens played at Lehigh. Always tough to play in Bethlehem. It's going to be tough up at Amherst. Homecoming for the Minutemen. I, I expect the same uh, emotional uh, uh, game uh, from Massachusetts. They've always gotten up for Delaware, and they've always gotten rather excited emotionally uh, in attempting to uh, beat us, uh, and especially up there in Massachusetts. They don't like to look bad in your own in your own backyard. Is there anything significant that the Massachusetts offense could do against a Delaware? Casey's kick was up and good. He is 13 of 13 overall in the season for PAT placements. Hens 14, Pioneers nothing, seven and a half to play first quarter. Jeff KC Knobloch. Second kickoff of the ball game. Fumble. Hens got it. KC's got it. Out in the making at Delaware Stadium. Two very costly turnovers for the CW Coast Pioneers. KC now blocked for his first fumble recovery of the 82 college football season. Flags on the flag. CW first with a big break. Offsides was the call against the hands on the kickoff. KC will have to do it again. Lonnie Holcomb has fumbled both kickoffs. This is uh, uh, Williams, number 46. Williams with some room, but on the sideline there, Pawlowski will drag him down. That was Jim Pawlowski, number 16, a backup strong safety to make the hit. And CW will move it first and 10 
from their own 40 yard line. Delaware's first scoring drive, two minutes, 10 seconds, five plays, 46 yards. 14, nothing hands. Here's Nutri, the fullback. Newfrock's got him. Good Newfrock will bury him in his own backfield back at the 36. Orlowski also in there. Blair Pierce back there, late number 91. And defense ready. Orlowski's in there for Lou Rita, I believe. Not sure if Lou's injured, he wears number 20. Second down and about 13 for CW. Earhart on a straight drop. Going to the flat, picked off 96. George Smith is going to coast in the end zone. It's 20 to nothing, and Steve Earhart looking for number 46, Brian Williams. Schmidt picks it off at the 49 yard line, and Delaware leads 20 nothing. George Schmidt takes over the lead for interceptions on the club. He has four on the season. That's his first touchdown of the 82 season. 20 nothing, Delaware. Got KC Knobloch to attempt his third extra point of the ball game. Has hit 13 straight this season. Had eight straight at the end of last year. Good snap, Mailey, good hold. Kick is good. Blue Hens, 21. CW Post, nothing. That's the story. With 6.26 to go, first quarter, Delaware's going to hang in that top 10 in the country. Lonnie Holcomb and Brian Williams deep. Here's Holcomb. He's dropped his third on the afternoon. Shelling number 43 in there on the stop at the 25 of CW Post. Harris also there, number four. And also Kowalski, Ken Kowalski, number 30, twin brother of Jim. CW will move it first and 10. They need some points in a hurry. Tom Earhart has had his problems this year. Uh, he has thrown eight interceptions on the season. Nucci, the fullback, will bust his way for a couple. Robertson there. With Paul Brown. Greg Robertson leading the team of tackles at middle linebacker. Tom Earhart coming in here, 40 of 88, seven interceptions, two TDs for 409 yards. That is 45%. Remember last year he had over 2,000 yards in the air. Morrow, halfback, Barry, Pulaski has him and drops him. Blair Pierce slowed him up in the backfield and Pulaski came in to make the stick. I bring up a third and about nine for the Pioneers with 5.30 first quarter. The biggest problem the Pioneers have had this season is finding receivers. Two all ECAC performers graduated last year. They combined for 20 touchdown passes. Here's Earhart. Draw, Nara, for some room. Glad they missed the tackle, but the hands were there in time to stop Nara first down yardage. Left Pierce, number 91, made the hit. And the hens again will get the football back. Sam Flory is to do the punting. Thalen deep. Kevin will not get to this one unless he gets a lucky bounce. It will dribble out of bounds. Hens will put it in play. First and 10 with 4.23 left to deep. 21. Pat McKee is in there at left. Offensive guard number 66. John Lobb also there at that offensive tackle. Here's Titus. Rick just bouncing up the middle. To pick up about six yards on the play. We'll call it second down and a short four. Rick Scully getting very close to pass Billy Zwan on the all-time passing list here at the University of Delaware. Rick coming in at 2,910 yards. Needed 55 to pass Billy Swan and 99 to pass Don Miller. They'll move to number three on the all-time list. Most likely before this day is out. John Merkliner diving up to the 35-yard line. He's close to first down yardage. John Merkliner. Up a third and about one. Tim Sager in there at tight end number 82. Flag, sends move too quick. Lulo jumped the gun. And I don't think Rick Titus had first down yardage. Tony was against the Hens, illegal procedure. CW declines. They'll get the football. Titus, a lot of heat. Flag, roughing the punter against CW Coast. The last thing that Jim Colbert needed, Hens will have first and 10 in very good field position. 
15 yard penalty against CW Post. Pens in good shape. Midfield, first and 10. Scully, Kaysan, this is Phelan. Kevin spinning off a couple people and diving to the 46. Interesting, interesting story about Kevin Phelan. He came here to play baseball. That was his main objective coming to the University of Delaware. Highly recruited throughout the country for baseball. He was recruited by North Carolina, Maryland, Rutgers, a couple other ball clubs down south. And also the pro ball players, pro ball clubs wanted him early. Decided to play college baseball and football, and he dropped the baseball to concentrate on football here at the university. Scully over the middle, got a man, Sager. Took Sager down to the 40 first and 10 hands. Good pass for Rick Scully, and I believe Rick has moved into the fourth spot all-time passing yardage here at Delaware. Tim Sager had four catches last week against the University of Massachusetts up in Amherst, and a big one to open the second half of play. He had been very important that past week. Sager had 84 yards, longest catch against Mass was 42-yarder, and Mark Steimer, he's had uh, back trouble, or shoulder problems for Mark Steimer. Sager has taken his spot. First and 10 at the 21. Phelan, Reeder, and Kaysan. Here's Kaysan. John slashing inside the 20, dropped around the 17. And that'll bring up the second for about six. The Hens and the Pioneer, who have met twice, once in 71 in the boardwalk bowl, blew them at 72 to 22, and also in 79. Reeder, his first carry. Dan Reeder pulling his way inside the 15, down to about the 12. Dan has not seen a lot of action lately. He had a concussion against Lehigh in the first half. Reeder sat out most of that ball game. Did not play much last week against Massachusetts. On the season, Reeder, 28 carries, 118 yards, 4.2 average. Third down, hands about three. Reader will get first down yardage. Drop inside the 10. Russ Aaron, left defensive end on the stop in the 33. First and goal, hands just inside the 10 yard line. 18 seconds remain. First quarter, Delaware up 21 points. Phelan, Kevin's going to get in the end zone, six points. Nice trap blocking from the nine. Kevin Phelan there for the touchdown. His second of the ball game, and the Hens lead it 27 to nothing. We have 11 seconds left, first quarter. Holding call against the Hens, and KC's gonna have to hit a 20 yard here. High snap. Mailey, can he pick it up? Bill's gonna scoop, and Obi dropped back in his 50. That's about the only thing the Hens have done wrong this afternoon. The score at Delaware, 27, CW, nothing, with 11 seconds left, first quarter. There was no further scoring in the first quarter, and it Delaware, 27, CW, post, nothing. Up action early in the second quarter, sophomore quarterback John Spar in action. John Spar in there at quarterback, and I think we're gonna see a little bit more of Rick Scully today. Sure, Tubby Raven wants to get Spar some work with the first team unit. Play action, Spar over the middle, got a man, nice pass. Sager with the catch. John Spar coming in was two of three on the season. Sager with his second grab, ends first hand yardage at the 34. Kaysan, Reeder, Phelan in there. Hammond split wide left. Here's Reeder. Dan's got some room at the 40. Run out of bounds there at about the 36. Close on the tackle number 16 for CW Post. For Mark Reeder at the 27. Seven yard pickup, second and three. There's Mark Leonard. John's got speed, 10, five inside the four down at the two. Have to think this head offense has looked impressive. And John Merklin are grabbing the knee at the goal line. That's not a good sign. Doc Rodliner there, assisting to John Merklin, and we hope he's all right. We move to further action two plays later, same hen series. Third and goal, look for Spar at the Grover Mill. And Martin. 
He didn't get in. He did not get in the end zone. Ends up in Stiney here inside the two. Joe Ryan, number 74, and John McKee, number 99, stopping Spar for three straight times. And that second play, Spar thought he was in the end zone. Steve, you can't get any closure to the goal line. We'll try it again. Peshwin Martin, Mill Moore, Smith up front. This bar on a fourth and goal. Reader, touchdown. Dan Reader, his first touchdown in a blue head football uniform. He dances in with 12 minutes even to play here. Second quarter, Hens leading 33 to nothing. Melly to hold for Knobloch. Last time, Bill had a high snap. Ball went way back in the head backfield, but good snap here, good hold, good kick. Your score, Delaware 34, CW throws nothing. Ends rolling here in the first half. Now block. Holcomb will drop another one in his end zone this time. He'll down it. And the Hens will play defense. CW first and 10 from the 20. Alan Figg is in the ball game, number 13. This is Nucci, nice open field tackle by George Schmidt. The pro clubs have been interested in George Schmidt. Tampa Bay is a warrior. Checking out the films here midway through his senior season. Second down and 12. Earhart has had trouble at quarterback, has not had the football that much. Tom will go sideline, got a man, Williams. Brian Williams with his second catch of the ball game. And it's third and five. CW Post has a lot of ground to pick up here. They trail by 34. Earhart straight drop in the pocket. And his man Williams fell down. Kowalski on the coverage. Flores will have to come on and punt once again. Sam Flores to kick. That's Kevin Phelan deep. Kevin's going to get a chance on this one at the 48. Look for the sideline, 45, and be dropped at the 44. Kevin Phelan averaging 5.4 yards of return. His long on the season has been 16 yards. He's returned every punt this year. First and 10 blue hands from the CW first, 43 yards. Spar still running the ball club. Higher in there, number 28 at a halfback. Here's Kaysan spinning inside the 43 down to the 42. Chris Higher is in the backfield, a sophomore. Where's number 28? 5'10, 177 pounder. He's out of McQuaid High School in Rochester, New York. Spar, of course, out of Cherry Hill. Both sophomores. Slegel also in there, number 44. Tim Slegel is a sophomore out of Elkton. Spar's got a man. Higher. Goes down at the 30. John Merklinger checks back in the head backfield. Good sign there. John's going to be a good one for his days. We're over here at the University of Delaware, only a sophomore. Mike Lane is the split end, number 88. There's Mark. Pick up four on the play. Ed Finney is in there at an offensive guard, number 54. Ed the junior. Kevin Ferguson is working at center at the 53. Reader stacked up. Dan going good. Going good. A yard deep in the back row. We move to further action in the same hen series. First and ten. About a foot outside the 10-yard line. Four. Take the tightest. John's going to set up and hit Kaysan. Kaysan will dive to about the three. We'll call it second down and goal from the three. Steve, once again, Spar right on the money. Kaysan on an out pattern. Picks up good yardage on first down. It's going to be a fourth down. 
figured that the Hens would have a first and goal after for the uh, late hit. Let them make it a double. Right lane is wide open. John Spar hitting. And the Hens lead it 40 to nothing. We are midway, second quarter with 6.07 left. Steve on that drive, John Spar guides the Hens 56 yards, five minutes and nine plays on the touchdown Spar to Lane. Maley holding for Nablot. KC has had a lot of work early in this one. The score, Delaware 41, CW Post nothing. There was no further scoring and the first half ended. Delaware rolling 41 to nothing over CW Post. Stay with us, we'll come back with our halftime feature. This week, defensive tackle number 78, Joe Valentino. Second. And a long eight. Valentino, big sack. Joe Valentino. Six foot, 254 pounds. Number 78, and Joe, just before the CW post game, got some bad news. Stress fracture in your left foot. Gonna be down in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, we found out yesterday. Uh, the bone scan came back positive, uh, but I do have a stress fracture. Uh, I've been playing with it since the second half of the Temple game, and uh, the doctor says that if I do continue to play, that I run the risk of breaking the entire bone, and they uh, just suggested that I take at least a couple weeks off to let it heal up and uh, let the integrity of the bone get a little cancer on there and uh, be ready possibly for the win the game. I'm sure some fans at home have to wonder how why well, wouldn't this found out a little bit earlier? It's been, I guess, three weeks, since the, four weeks since the Temple game, and then we find out uh, a week before the CW game. Uh, that was my question, too, but it seems that uh, the doctor explained that uh, uh, stress fractures don't normally appear on x-rays right away, that the, uh, the break is so fine that uh, the, the normal x-ray doesn't pick it up, and uh, you usually don't see it until the bone actually starts to heal. And the uh, bone scan process, uh, they inject you with a dye, and uh, they let the dye soak up into the entire body, and then they start taking x-rays and uh, uh, s some other readouts which determine uh, the amount of heat going to certain areas of your body. And through all this, and a computer and a doctor, they, they finally found the spot you know, where it was injured. Joe, go back to your uh, freshman year. You're a five-year senior now. The whole entire freshman club was redshirted that year, and now you're here for your fifth year at the University of Temple. Any second thoughts looking back on that? There was a team vote, right? Yeah, there was. Uh, you could call us super seniors, redshirted, left back, whatever you want to say. Uh, uh, there have been times when, uh, kidding me, you know, out in the field, uh, you know, after this last preseason, so uh, I wish I didn't do it, you know, another guess. Uh, uh, but that was all, in, you know, kiddingly. Uh, if I didn't do it again, I would definitely do it, and I, I feel the guys at redshirted now. Uh, with me, we'll do it also because uh, uh, to play another year in front of you know approximately 20,000 fans in a uh, varsity program here is uh, is a great throw, and uh, I would definitely sacrifice the freshman year all over again to do it. Joe, well, it's somewhat ironic because the senior class, the four-year seniors that are here right now, is somewhat of a limited bunch. Sure. The senior class would be in trouble without you guys. True. Uh, well, no, well, they would have had about about eight guys, I guess, and uh, we have about 15 guys from our class. Uh, it seems like the seniors is a lot. Uh, if, if it had only been the normal senior group, I guess the leadership would have been limited, but uh, I think they would have done all right even without us. We had a great program and we would have done all right. Coaching staff knew what they were doing. Sure, <laughs> sure. Joe, you're from New City, New York. Not New York City, New City, which is about 35 miles northwest of New York City. That's right. How do you like it down here in Delaware? Uh, from the very beginning, I was impressed with the uh, facilities here, uh, both academically and also uh, for football. Uh, the town is definitely a college town. Uh, the atmosphere is great. Uh, the people are open and friendly. And uh, it's just a great place to go to school and play ball. What do you think the team continuity has been? Some players have mentioned that the team together was not where it was early in the season, but with the Lehigh win, win last week against Mass, everybody seems to be pulling together down the stretch. That's true. Uh, you know, we, uh, that could be due to uh, that we do have a lot of seniors this year and a lot of individuals, and it's uh, it, it's tough to get everyone together and uh, uh, come together as a group. When we went through the Lehigh game and, and the Mass game also with our backs up against the wall, that's when you find out uh, the guy next to you, what he's really about, his character, and uh, 
Uh, we all pulled together because we all wanted it, and we had our backs up against the wall, and uh, we came through. What's in the future of Joe Valentino? What's in the future? Concerning what? Uh, anything. Football, your career uh, as uh, uh, academics? The career for me is to get the foot healthy right now, uh, get ready for the rest of the season here, and uh, hopefully bring back a ring. Early in the third quarter, post on their first drive. First possession of the second half for CW Post. Two and two on the year. Gannon makes a tackle. That was Sal Nero, number 20. The halfback on the carry. He will lose two yards running east to west. And the Pioneers have had trouble running north and south this afternoon. Opened the ball game very impressively with a long first down. They picked up their in Delaware territory. And then the old saying, the bottom fell out. That's exactly what happened to this Pioneer ball club. Out of Long Island, New York. Nucci, fullback. Witherspoon there, fumble on the play. Hens got it. Hen football, it's Wetzelberger, number 92, on the recovery. Bob Wetzelberger, his first fumble recovery of his career here at the University of Delaware. And the Hens in good shape, 11-22, third quarter. They lead 41-0. John Sparr checks in for Rick Scully. Look for there. John with some room. 10. Hammer there at the 10. Picked up about six on the play. Got second and about four yards. Silk on the hit. Ray Silk. John Law, Mike Martin, Pete Mill, Mark Willow, Randy Smith, Tim Sager across that front. Merkel in motion. Here's the fullback Titus. Rick at the five. Diving to the four. He has a first down. It will be first and goal, Delaware. First and goal, Blue Hens. Paul Hammond, split wide left. Here's Titus. Rick down to the one yard line. It will be second and goal from the one. Rick Titus, leading ball carrier on the ball club. Coming in with 58 rushes for 255 yards. A couple of TDs. 4.4 norm for Rick Titus. He has a shot of breaking the 1,000 yard club here at the University of Delaware, as well as Kevin Faywood. Leaf Titus needs about 350 yards. Phelan a little bit more. Stack full house backfield for Phelan up over the top. And he does not get in. Stopped short of the goal line. Now bring up a third down goal. CW Post has been somewhat tough inside their own 10 yard line. Then they held the hands right before halftime when BJ Webster was in there quarterback. Had a first and goal from the seven, couldn't get in. This is third and goal. Hammond, but way wide to the left, Spar running the controls. Little sneak behind Mill, six points for John Spar. His first touchdown of his career here at the University of Delaware. The Hens lead it 47 to nothing. KC Knobloch to do the booting. Maley again holding. High, gonna get there, yes. That ball got hung up with a stiff win and just barely cleared the upright. That's the story. 9.05 third quarter, Hens 48, CW nothing. CW Post scored one late touchdown. The final score was Delaware 48, CW Post 7. The Hens go 5 and 1 overall in the year. CW goes 2 and 3 on the 82 college season. Stay with us. We'll go down to the locker room, talk to George Smith, John Kason, John Gannon, and also Tubby Raymond. Have the top 10 around the country. Be right back right after this.
Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rollins Cablevision Studios. Steve Turnberger here on the 1982 Blue Hen Football Report. Week six is history. Can you believe it? We have gone through six complete weeks of UD college football. The Hens at five and one on the year. Tonight, we'll talk injuries, give you the complete injury report from Saturday afternoon. Also, give you team statistics, how the Hens made out, obviously, very well against the Post on Saturday. Give you the top ten, how they fared across the country. The NCAA top ten, all the scores and results. Also, the first week of the Lamb Cup balloting. Very interesting how this is going to work out. We'll let you know that in just a couple minutes. Also, talk to John Kason, George Schmidt, John Gannon, and head coach Tubby Raymond in that victorious hen locker room in just a couple minutes. Right now, injuries. The hens come out of the uh, sixth game of the season very well. John Merkel, remember he got injured late in the second quarter. Knee problems. John will be okay. He'll be ready for Saturday afternoon. George Schmidt had a leg injury also in the first half of that ball game. George will be ready against Towson on Saturday. Mark Steimer didn't play at all at tight end. Tim Sager again played a very good ball game in place of Mark St uh, Steimer. Reoccurring shoulder injury is the problem with Steimer. He'll be ready. They're just nursing that injury along. They don't want to uh, forelong any uh, reoccurrence of this injury. So Mark has been sitting out whenever possible. Ron Rossi. Ron, we haven't seen him play since the Temple game in the first half up at Franklin Field. He has been nursing a sprained ankle Ron could be ready for Saturday. If he's not needed, he will not play. John Gannon, again, will go at left defensive end. Joe Valentino, you saw him in the halftime show. He will be out for at least another two weeks. Hopefully, Joe will be ready for the William & Mary game coming up in early November. Joe Valentino with a str uh, stress fracture on his left foot. Let's talk team statistics. Hens rolling here. First downs, CW Post with seven in the ballgame. Delaware with 22. They dominated play on Saturday afternoon. Net yards rushing, CW with 46. The Hens with 220. Ironically, Delaware has not had a 100-yard performance by one rusher this season. Don't look for that to last too long. Net yards passing, 83 for uh, Tommy Earhart. The Hens rang up 181 yards through the air. Passes completed and attempts for uh, Tom Earhart, 9 of 24, one interception. That was picked off by George Schmidt, returning 45 yards for his first collegiate touchdown. Delaware, 12 of 18, one interception in the airways. Total net yards, 129 from the post, 401 for the University of Delaware offense. And Rick Titus had uh, not a bad day, 38. My looks. This week's top 10, how they fared in uh, October 16th over the weekend. Eastern Kentucky, number one team in the country. Number two, John Kaysan after the hands of 148 to 7. John's second leading rusher in the ballgame. Limited action today. How'd you feel the offense ex executed in the first half? Well, compared to that, uh, we were executing in the past. I think the uh, off of the line came out. I don't think we did a pretty good job. John, your transfer from Villanova, you've been down here, I guess, a year, just about a year and a half right now. What do you think the, the major difference is between Villanova and Delaware? I think here, things are uh, programmed to be more precise. I think uh, the coaching is uh, truly a lot better than if you ask me personally. Um, I just think uh, the whole team effort here is, is uh, a lot more geared to a certain goal. Uh, and that is uh, making it, you know, to the uh, finals and uh, doing the job. It worked out very nicely for you, and uh, I'm sure you were disappointed when Villanova decided to drop their football program after your freshman year. Everything's worked out very well for you coming down here to Delaware. Definitely. I think this is, uh, I think them dropping the program, I think this is the best thing that would happen to me. You know? If, uh, thinking about it now, I like to thank the guy. <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah. John, your offensive coordinator, Ted Kemsky, has been waiting for you to just explode in one game. You haven't had the, a great football game here at the University of Delaware. You haven't had a lot of playing time. This year you're starting to get it. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before you explode one of these days. Uh, I think that's a uh, tribute to me not being, uh, you know, comfortable yet. Um, and I think in order for me really, do, really to have a good game, I have to be comfortable with what I'm doing. Not, I mean, not that I don't know my plays or anything, just, you know, as far as reading blocks and maybe scanning the field a little more instead of just concentrating on a certain area and running towards that, you know, let's thing over and let's do what I can do. You got a neck injury in the uh, Tampa Bowl game, sat out against Princeton. How's the injury right now? Uh, still pretty nagging. It's been sore ever since the, I first got it, which was in the third quarter of the Tampa game, and uh, I'm just trying to work it out and do the best I can with it. Okay, John. Good game today. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right.
John Kaysan, number two in that hen backfield, carried nine times, gained 43 yards, had a 13 for his long on the afternoon. That's about the average for John Kaysan. Also caught a TD pass, second touchdown of the 1982 season for John Kaysan. Next uh, guest, I guess you would call him down in the hen locker room, John Gannon, a junior, a 6'1", 215-pounder at a St. Joseph's Prep up in Philadelphia. John has moved from a linebacker to a defensive end, played very well in the absence of Ron Rossi. Here's number 55. John Gannon. The hands went big over CW. John, first team defense played very well today. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess it was a good chance for us to you know, get things done, work together. You know, uh, a lot of times we had real close games, but I think we had a little fun today, you know, for a change. You know, we weren't have to worry about, uh, we could be a little more free and go a little wild in there. Before that, we were always struggling with games were a little closer than they should have been, so. John, somewhat unfortunate for uh, Ron Rossi to go down, but you've got a lot of playing time since Ron has been injured. You started here as a linebacker. You were moved to a defensive end and linebacker last spring. Mm -hmm. How have you adapted to the defensive end position? Well, uh, the stud position that I played uh, at linebacker is very similar to a, an end position in that you know, you're out on the end a lot. Uh, it's really um, very similar, and I'm adjusting pretty well, I think. You know, like that Ron back, you know, he's a real good ball player. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, nursing his leg a little bit in play day, but uh, you know, I hope he'll come back and we'll have a strong defense. You know? Last year, the defense took a lot of heat, a lot of long touchdown passes. Lehigh game is one that everybody looks back on. Yeah. This year, the defense has been counted upon to hold opponent, opponent teams down because your offense really hasn't scored a lot of points this year. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure has been on that defense. Well, it's, it's true, you know, but I think you know, they've raised the occasion in each, in each instance and, uh, you know, we're kind of, the offense is really improving a lot each week, and, uh, and they're right up with us. And, you know, I think, you know, from here on in, you know, we can expect a lot of good things. Uh, both of us, you know, just be the defense. Or not that that's what it was, but, you know, what we were relied upon um, a little bit. One of the anchors on that defensive front, probably the biggest one, Joe Valentino, did not play today. He was on the sidelines. Right. I'm sure everybody gave a little extra effort for Joe. I think so. Thank you, right, yeah. John Gannon playing good football for defensive coordinator Ed Milley at that left defensive end spot. Time to talk to the coach, Tubby Raymond, his fifth victory of the season, convincing one over CW Post, course 48 to 7. Here's coach Tubby Raymond in that head locker room. As of one game, number five, coach 48-7 victory over CW Post today. Your comments after the ballgame. Well, we're pleased to get the job done, to win a ball game, uh, to play a lot of people, uh, work on the... Uh, work on the problems of the day, so to speak, and I thought we did that. Uh, we were able to play three quarterbacks and use a host of running backs. Uh, we still have some problems. We're not as strong as I'd like to be up front offensively. And um, I thought we played well defensively, uh, particularly in uh, light of the, the number of injuries that we have in the, in the front four. Rick Scully, four for four, two touchdowns, uh, 64 yards. He was impressive early. Well, there's no question about it. He had a, he had a, had a, a fine day, and, and he, can be a, he can be an exceptional quarterback. And we've talked about his consistency. Uh, uh, but at the same time, he, he has done some exceptional things for us, uh, certainly the last two weeks and then again today, to, to put us on the board early. And uh, uh, I, w I just hope that he continues to improve because we're gonna, we've got some tough hoeing down the road. What were your expectations coming in here when UCW did not have a lot of off offensive prowess? They were averaging a couple hundred yards of ball game coming in. Did you ever think you'd come out with this type of win? Well, of course, the, this, this type of thing is, uh, uh, is possible almost any time. And, and I think when you uh, uh, reflect back on the last two ball games, both of which could have been in some ways uh, won much more readily than, than they were, that anything can happen in, uh, in, in, a, in a ball game like today. We had field position early uh, because of fumbles and problems with, a, uh, with the, the, their uh, kickoff return team and handling the ball, and all of a sudden they get out of hand. I, uh, I, I would like to have thrown more. We, we stopped throwing uh, a little bit uh, early uh, because I didn't, I'm not, wasn't, in, wasn't interested in, in scoring anymore. Uh, but other than that, it was, a f it was a good day, and we got a lot of work done. 
Head coach Tubby Raymond starting to feel the mid-season pressures. A little emotional dream there for the coach. Five games left in this 82 season. Four of them will be down at the University of Delaware. Let's talk George Schmidt. 13 career interceptions on uh, his career at the University of Delaware. Picked off one against uh, Earhart on Saturday afternoon. Took back 45 yards for his first collegiate touchdown. George needs two more interceptions to tie the all-time record at University of Delaware. Here's number 26, George Schmidt. Touchdown today here at the University of Delaware, a 45-yarder. Broke the game open midway first quarter, George. I know you felt good getting back in that end zone. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Uh, uh, getting the touchdown down here is definitely a thrill, and uh, you know you only get so many opportunities to break one, but uh, fortunately, I uh, had a lot of sidelines, and uh, I'll take it. <laughs> you faced good quarterbacks week in and week out. Uh, Earhart, the guy you faced today, was ECAC Rookie of the Year, honorable mention All-American, and a lot of pressure on your secondary this year. Well, you know, I think there's always pressure on the secondary, you know. Uh, teams are always going to throw the ball when they can't run it, and uh, as soon as things go wrong, they usually point to the secondary. But, uh, you know, you check out uh, games week in and week out, and, uh, you know, people catch touchdown passes. But uh, we're bearing down back there, and, uh, you know, I don't think any of us really mind the pressure. You know, it's what we're all back there. We've been back there for three years. And, uh, you know, those things are going to happen, but uh, I think we're coming together and we're, you know, progressing, and uh, we should be there by the end of the year. In three years back there, big experience factor. I know when you guys are back there as sophomores, sometimes you're looking around at each other wondering what's going on. Right now, you know exactly just about exactly what everybody's going to do together back there. That's got to be a big help for you. Yeah, I think uh, being back there uh, three years, it, uh, mentally, it does away with a lot of mental mistakes. And uh, number two, personally, you can shake off uh, things that when you get beat, uh, you don't get down on yourself as bad. And uh, the confidence of having, uh, you know, you've got two safeties like Louie and Billy behind you. And, uh, get all the confidence in the world in him, so that helps. Uh, I think you had uh, 11, 12, 13 interceptions coming out of this ball game. You're well ahead of the interception rate from last year. Is there anything that could have come from that? Uh, the tribe of William and Mary. William and Mary coming in here at 2 and 5 on the season. Yeah, Mr. Blue Hens and the tribe of William and Mary. William and Mary coming in here at 2 and 5 on the season. They lost to uh, Miami of Ohio at home, 35-17. Beat VMI 24-12. Lost to a rugged Virginia Tech ball club, 47-3. Lost at Rutgers, 27-17. Beat Dartmouth at home in Williamsburg, 24-16. Lost at Navy, 39-3. And lost last weekend at James Madison by a score of 24-18. The Tribe coming in here at 2-5 on the season. Blue Hens of Delaware coming in at 6-1. Captains at midfield, Paul Brown, of course, number 80 for the Blue Hens of Delaware. And a player you'll, you uh, will recognize down there, number 51, is Wayne McMasters, graduate of St. Mark's High School. Had a great career for the Spartans, playing under head man Donnie Borowski. Dan Nass and McMasters down there okay. with Brown. Hens win the toss, I'm sure they will receive. And William and Mary will defend the South goal. We're about set for game action. Hens in week number eight. Delaware number four in the country. We look to move up this week. Big game against William and Mary right here at Delaware Stadium. We are underway from Delaware Stadium. This is John Kaysan, number two. Drops the football, picks it up 15. He will barely get out to the 20 and be dropped at the 21-yard line. The Hens will move it first and 10. Remember, Kaysan did not play at all last week against Townsend State. He has a reoccurring neck injury that he suffered against Temple in the second uh, ball game of the season. For the Hens, up front, your left tackle is Tom Pester, and he wears number 70. Left guard is Doug Martin, number 60. Center is Pete Mills, senior, 6'4", 240 pounder. He wears number 52. Right guard is Mark Malillo, number 61. Right tackle is Randy Smith number 65. Tight end, Mark Steinman, number 85. Here's your fullback with Titus with Looks down first down up over the 30 to the 35. McMaster's getting there late to make the hit, and the Hens with their traditional fullback dive on first and 10. Hammond will split wide left. Scully on an option. He will be hammered at the line of scrimmage. Wernicke on the tackle. Carl Wernicke, 5'11", 210-pound sophomore, wearing number 91. William and Mary coming out of a 6-2 defense. They have been scored on at will at times this season. Navy ran up 39 points on the tribe. 
Virginia Tech scored 47 in a 47-3 victory over William & Mary in the third ball game of the season. Little counter for Clement. Cliff will dance up around the 40. Pick up a couple yards on the play. That will bring up a third and about five. The hands with 507 yards last week in total offense. Titus. Rick Titus, first down. Lost the football. They blew it dead at the 46. Blew the football dead at the 46. Second first down of the ball game. Both of them picked up by Rick Titus. Hands on a first and 10 from their own 46 yard line. 13 minutes, 12 seconds, first quarter. Kevin Phelan, Clement, Titus in the backfield. Here's Rick Titus. Up to midfield. Hands at six and one. Rick Titus, leading ball carrier on the club, 377 yards coming in. Scully wants to throw first time in the ball game. Has Clement, Cliff, 40, down to the 35 and run out of bounds. First and 10, blue hands. Jerome Waters, left cornerback. Ran Clement out of bounds, and the Hens will have a first and 10. They're moving the football here on their first possession of the ball game. Rang up 51 points last week against Towson State. And in the last two weeks, they have exploded. Against CW Post, they scored 21 points in a span of about 70 seconds. Last week, they scored three touchdowns in two minutes and 18 seconds. Here's Reeder, Dan Reeder, his, his first carry. Reeder down at 30, 25, busting deep into William and Mary territory. First down, Reeder at the 16. Steve, that's the third play that a Delaware fullback has handled the football, and on all three occasions, they have picked up excellent yardage. A lot of credit has to go to center Pete Mill. Second longest carry of the season for Dan Reeder coming in here with 224 yards on the year. His longest carry was 26 last week against Towson State. Reader, a transfer from Boston College, graduate of nearby Christiana High School. Scully, sideline pattern. Clement at the 10. Cliff will twist down to about the 7. And the Blue Hens looking very strong offensively. Guy Crittenton, number 14, on the hit. Second down and about 3. Clement in the wing. Scully. Once Phelan, Kevin's wide open. Rick's gonna try to get in himself down to the three and run out of bounds. Kevin Phelan flared out of the backfield. John Metronic came up to make the hit. And the Hens will have a third down. I'm sorry, that'll be a first down, Delaware. It was a second and short call, and Rick Scully picked up the first down yardage. It's first and goal inside the two yard line. Steven, that is why Rick Scully is so effective. If he doesn't have any open receivers, he can turn it upfield. Scully, big day last week. Scored three times for the Blue Hens. Won a 29-yarder in the first quarter. Clement over the top, six points. Big touchdown for Cliff Clement. Still nursing a back injury. Cliff is very close to 100%. He also has had flu problems. Maley on the hold for KC. Knobloch, Knobloch gets it. He is 23 of 23 on his 82 collegiate football season. Cliff Clement makes it 7 up in Delaware with 11-13 to play here. KC Knobloch to kick it away. Dave Scanlon. Is deep along with Jeff. Oh. Knobloch. No win at all here at Delaware Stadium. This will be Scanlon at the 10. He wears number 34. At the 20, Owen Brand there with Alan Fig to make the hit up around the 27. And William and Mary will have fair field position on their first possession of the ball game. It will be Stan Gagello or Dave Murphy at quarterback to open. I believe it will be Murphy's going to start. Dave Murphy, the uh, junior, he will start in place of Gagello. Murphy right now 10th in the country in pass efficiency. His fullback is Jim McAfee, number 31. Tailback, Jeff Powell, number 22. They are both explosive. Scanlon will also play number 34. He's in there right now. This is Scanlon, fake to Scanlon over the middle. 
Murphy with his uh, first completion of the ball game. Jeff Saunders on the catch. He's up around the 38 yard line and he has first down yardage, first pass of the ball game for William and Mary. Steve, that first drive for the Blue Hands touchdown, three and a half minutes, 10 plays, eight of those running plays, and they take it 79 yards. William and Mary passing 40 times a ball game. They have averaged over 270 yards in the airways. Saunders will split wide left, along with Wrigley. In trouble, picked off. Paul Brown's got it. Super interception by Paul Brown. Great reflexes by the captain, and the hands of a first and 10 inside the William and Mary 20-yard line. We told you before the ball game, and it's been printed all week in the papers, William and Mary will throw the football. The hands rise to the occasion early here in great shape with a 7-0 lead. Steve, that was one pass Dave Murphy should have never thrown. Paul Brown was sitting there by himself. As you said, great reaction, and Delaware has a golden opportunity to score again. Kaysan in there, number two. Here's Phelan, his first carry. Kevin Phelan will dive to about the 15. Steve Zool on the tackle, right defensive guard, number 99. Phelan, second leading ball carrier on the club with 256 yards, a 5.8 norm. That's the best in the ball club. Ten-minute mark, first quarter, hands by seven. Titus. Titus has about three down to the 12. Carnell Warnecke on the stop, right linebacker, sophomore. This is a very young William and Mary ball club, but an experienced tribe club. Most of these players played last year. They returned 18 starters from 1981, 38 lettermen. Reader, Phelan, and Kaysan. Kaysan in motion, option Scully. He'll turn it up. And dive to about the seven yard line. He is close to first down yardage, but I believe he's short. Mims Hackett, number 18, right corner, comes up to make the hit. Six foot, 185 pound sophomore. Ted Kemsky and Tubby Raymond. Fourth down, hands going. Fourth and about one, Scully will dive. Diving behind Martin, Mill, and Marillo. Two guards and center up front, and he's got another first down. First and goal from the five. Steve, Pete Mill just barrels over Joe Lucas and Steve Zool, the two up front men for William and Mary, picks up a very important first down. Last time these clubs met, 1980, in a monsoon in Williamsburg, Virginia. Hens won at 7-3. Scully, middle. Too tall for Mark Steimer. Mark was deep in the end zone. Tribe had good coverage. Jerome Waters, 36. Mark Kelzo, number 23. And the Hens will have a second and goal. Ten of these defenders for William & Mary started last year. Scully. Ends going to the air early. Reader, touchdown. Dan Reader showing his versatility, going in the ball for Rick Scully. First touchdown pass of the game for Scully, five yarder to Dan Reader, all around athlete at Christiana High School, all state wrestler, football player, and also a very good track performer for Christiana High School with 13 nothing Blue Hands. Steve, a very unfamiliar play for Delaware. That is Dan Reader's first reception of the season. KC Knobloch has his second PAT in the ball game. And the ends. Gotta say they're rolling at 14 to nothing. 824 first quarter. William and Mary has run two offensive plays, and the hens have a two-touchdown advantage. Dave Scanlon deep for the tribe. KC Knobloch to kick it away. Jeff Powell also down there. This will be Scanlon from his 11. Scanlon at the 20. With some room. Got a nice hole and popped out to about the 30. Indians will put it in play first and 10. 
their second drive of the ball game, getting started right here at the 8-17 mark. Steve, that second Delaware touchdown, 17 yards in six plays, takes the hands just two minutes. They lead 14-0. Saunders and Wrigley split wide right. New quarterback, check it, I'm sorry, Dave Murphy is still in there, number 15. Scanlon on the carry, 5'9", 160 pounds, senior, wearing number 34. He will pick up two yards on the play. We'll call it second down and eight. Murphy, 74 of 116, three interceptions, four touchdowns, 805 yards on the season. Throwing at a 64% clip. Murphy on a straight drop over the middle, has a man wide open, first down in Delaware territory. Glenn Bonnar, number 19 on the reception, back up wide receiver. And we told you William and Mary can throw the football. We expect to see him put it up between 40 and 50 times this afternoon. Going to be a penalty against the hands. There was a late hit call after the play, cost the hands 15. First and 10 drive at the 25. Up front for the hands, that's the original starting line up in there. Brown, Howden Shield, Valentino, and Rossi. First time they've been together since Temple. Scanlon could not hang on at the 22. He had some room to operate. Bring up a second and 10 from the hen 25. Backers, Riley, Robertson, Witherspoon. Secondary, Newfrock, Maley, Schmidt, and Rita. Schmidt was the defensive player of the week in the Towson ball game. Murphy hit Bodnar in the numerals. Could not hang on. That will bring up a third and 10. Third down for Murphy. McKeffey and Scanlon in the backfield. This is Scanlon on a little swing pass. Valentino wants it, he'll get there. Witherspoon also getting a piece of Scanlon, and he is lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And that will bring up a fourth down and 10. Brian Morris is the freshman place kicker for William and Mary. He has had success this year kicking the football, but Jimmy Laycock and company want the touchdown here, down by 14. Murphy on a roll, right-hander. Way strong for Kurt Wrigley. William and Mary turns it over on downs, their first threat of the ball game, the Hens hold. They lead it 14 to nothing with 6.32 first quarter. Rick Scully brings him up, senior quarterback number 14, has 10 TD passes on the season, has run for five himself. Reader fumble. Indian football. William and Mary has it. Big break for the tribe at the 30. We move to further action in the same William and Mary drive, third and four at the hand 23. Third down for William and Mary. 4.50, first quarter, ends by 14. Murphy going to the right sideline, got his man. Kurt Wrigley on the reception, inside the 12-yard line, they will mark him at the 11. First and 10, William and Mary. Second time, William and Mary has gone to Kurt Wrigley, the second time that pass combination has been successful. On the afternoon, Dave Murphy is five for nine. Jeff Saunders splits wide right. McKeffey and Powell in the backfield. Here's Powell, number 22. He will be hammered at about the eight. Host of blue hand tacklers in there. Rita, Newfrock, Riley, and Robertson. Second and six. John Lasella, tight end on the right side there, number 81. Murphy on a roll, a lot of heat going to the end zone. Well overthrown. He wanted Wrigley. And George Schmidt had the coverage. Schmidt, the interception leader in Blue Hen history, has 15. He has six on the season. Saunders and Wrigley split wide right. Twin spread ends. Lasella, tight end left. 
Allen McAfee, Valentino wants Murphy, Joe won't get there, nice pass, almost caught and dropped. Saunders, Powell was there, number 22, incompleted pass. I believe that ball hit Saunders initially, and Jeff Powell tried to dive in there to scoop it off the turf. But it will fall incomplete and bring up a fourth down for William and Mary. They will kick the football field goal situation for the Tribe. Excellent pressure implied by Joe Valentino and Sean Riley. Riley hit Murphy as soon as he threw the football, causing it to sail, and it was almost picked off. Brian Morris to do the kicking. Murphy holding. 25-yarder is no good. And told again at the 3.53 mark first quarter. It's Delaware, 14, William and Mary, still scoreless. Hens have scored on two of three possessions thus far. Motion Phelan. Here's Kevin pulling behind Martin. Phelan's got some room up around that 30. He'll tip to the 36. Kevin Phelan, top all around performer on this Blue Head Ball Club, had a concussion in the first quarter last week, set out most of the first quarter, all of the second, and came back in the third quarter to catch a 33-yard TD pass. Looks like he's in good shape here for week number eight. First and 10 hands. Option, Scully has Kaysan. Rick will turn it up. Rick with a lot of room now, pitch to Kaysan. who will go down at about the 46. Ted Kemsky has decided to go with that option on several occasions in the last couple of weeks. That was the first time we saw Scully make the pitch deep in an opponent defensive backfield. First and 10 hands at the William and Mary 48. Rick Scully has had an excellent season rushing the football, 74 carries for 240 yards. That is somewhat deceiving. He has lost 174 yards dropping back in the pocket. Here's a Scully option again. Rick with a lot of room at the 35. Down to the 30. Into William and Mary territory, deep in the tribe territory at the 27. Remember, Rick Scully originally signed with William and Mary. He went down there in the fall of 1978, stayed a day and a half, packed his luggage, and came back home to Newark to play for Tubby Raymond. He was on a full ride, no cut scholarship with William and Mary. I'm sure a lot of people are very pleased he's back in here in the hen coop. 1977, first team All-Stater for Christiana. Phelan, 20, Kevin, 15. Down to the 14-yard line. Hen offense on a roll. Kevin Phelan with 32 yards on the ball game, and the hens are the first and 10 at the 14. And Kevin Hammond splits wide right. Number 39, grad of Concord, leading receiver. Here's Reeder. Dan Reeder, number 33. Nice spin move down to the six. Pickup of eight, called second and two. Reeder, a sophomore, six foot, 198 pounder. Second and two from the William and Mary six. Clement trying to get outside. McKee fumble, William and Mary has it. Another big turnover for Delaware. Last one did not cost them, but this one could have cost them six points. Jerome Waters. First down after a penalty against William and Mary. Inside the one, Murphy rolling, setting up, coming to the near sideline. Wanted Saunders, but George Schmidt had him step for step. Bring up a second and 10. Lair Pierce in at a left defensive tackle. Murphy scrambling over the middle, picked off. Lou Rita at the six. Down to the five to the three. Lou Rita with a big interception. Went high to grab it. And the hands in great shape. Inside the five yard line. Lou Rita, his fourth interception of the season. George Schmidt leads the club with six. John Lobb and Pat McKee in and a left tackle and left guard. Here's Scully. Rick sees pay dirt. He'll get there. 
TD for Rick Scully, his sixth in the 1982 Delaware football season. Has 36 points on the year, makes it 20 to nothing Delaware with 1.30 to play first quarter. KC Knobloch looking for his 33rd straight extra point. Remember, Delaware has flubbed two on the year. Knobloch will miss this one. KC Knobloch, that is his first miss since 1981. He had 32 straight before that kick. Ends lead at 20 to nothing with 90 seconds to play first quarter. Action early in the second quarter, William and Mary on a first down call. The Indians have lost to Miami of Ohio, Virginia Tech, Rutgers, Navy, and James Madison. Pow, fumble. Blair Pierce has it, number 91. Blair Pierce, senior, graduate of Salesianum. Had a broken leg last year, has come back to play very well in 1982. Started the year as a reserve, but he has played super football with seven of the first eight, 10 front four going down with injuries at different portions of this 82 season. First and 10, Delaware. Phelan back there with Reeder and Clement. Remember, Cliff was shaking up the last possession. Phelan has it, 50, 40, 35, run out of bounds there, first and 10 hands. Steve, great blocking by number 85, Mark Steimer. He took away number 18, Mims Hackett, and springing Phelan down the right sideline. Kevin Phelan, his 15th reception of the season. He has 217 yards catching the football. John Merkler checks in at the right half, number 32. Here's Reeder, fullback. Bounces off of one man. Dives down to about the 26. Picked up five, caught second and five. Reeder, pitch to Clement. Cliff at the 15, 10, nice block by Hammond. Down to the five, Cliff still battling inside the three. Bounced out of bounds, about the two. It will be first and goal, Delaware. Steve, you can see the blocking by number 39, Paul Hammond on that one. Cliff Clement, an excellent carry, picking up substantial yardage down to the one yard line, 18 yards on that carry. Looking out of the north end zone here at Delaware Stadium, Rick Scully dives, he's in. Rick Scully, his seventh TD of the season. And with that score, Rick takes over as the leading scorer on the ball club. Scully with 44 points on this collegiate season with 11.31 to play, second quarter. Hens rolling here, 26 to nothing. Looks like they'll go for two points. John Lobb in there at right tackle. Clement motion, two point conversion attempt. Over the middle, a little behind Dan Reeder. Tough play for Dan Reeder, could not pull that one down. But the Hens go on top here, they lead 26 to nothing with 11 minutes, 31 seconds to play, second quarter. Tubby Raymond, 17th year with the Blue Hens. Looking for his 144th victory. Second winning as coach in the country. That's among active coaches right now. Gallo on a first and 10 call. William and Mary was forced to take a timeout there. Straight drop over the middle. Has his man Saunders. Just curled underneath the coverage of Bill Malley and Sean Riley. First and 10 tribe at their own 47. Gallo. A throw better than most clubs. Prayer down the left sidelines. Wrigley with a great catch. Wrigley with a super effort over George Schmidt. Schmidt, he had the coverage at the 20, but Wrigley went high and stole it away from him. First and 10, William and Mary inside the 22-yard line. They'll mark him at the 21. Kurt Wrigley, six foot, 190-pounder, two-year letterman. He's a senior. McAfee and Scanlon in the backfield. Miguel out. Rolling, Rossi chasing, nice block by Scanlon. Miguelo with some room at the 10, sidestepping some blue hands down to the five. First in goal, William and Mary. Starting to move the football here, midway, second quarter. 
the brain trust for William and Mary. That's Jimmy Laycock, Saunders, and Scanlon to his left. Miguel out. Rolling and throwing. Had a man open. That was Jeff Powell at the goal line. Threw it out of shoelaces. Bring up a second and goal with 9.07 second quarter. Saunders split left. Lacella tight end left. Powell, great speed. Diving, touchdown. Jeff Powell with 4-3 speed. Burst through a small hole on the right side of that William and Mary line. Got into the end zone, went behind Graham Miller and Chris Huge. Both 6'2", 240 pound sophomores. And it's 26 to six. Delaware by 20. Dave Murphy to hold for Brian Morris. Good snap, good hold, has it. Your score, Blue Hands 26, William and Mary seven. Nine minutes, three seconds to play, second quarter. The Tribe trying to get back in this one. They're two and five on the season. The next hen drive ended in an aborted field goal try, so we pick up action. William and Mary football on a third down call. Ends with 20 first quarter points. Nicolo over the middle, has McAfee. First down at the 43. First and 10, William and Mary at their own 43 yard line, 440 second quarter. Yagello on a straight drop. Witherspoon on a blitz along with Reader, number 20. Yagello airing it down the left sidelines at Wrigley. But let him a little bit too strong. Lufak had the coverage, number 10. A safety and linebacker blitz there with the Delaware defense. Rita and Witherspoon both coming. Jim Newfrock, number 10, there's Rita, number 20. And secondary, they have been tested on several occasions this season. Have bent, but haven't broken thus far. Miguel out. Rolling, going to be picked off. Robertson had it dropped it. Steve, that one was too easy. Robertson was waiting for the football to come down from the sky. The ball was just floating. And Robertson could not hold on. That would have been a big break for the Hens. Robertson, a sophomore, 6'2", 220-pounder, out of Seaford High School, looking for his first interception of the season. Third down, 10. Wrigley split wide left. Miguel a straight drop. Brown almost had him. Howden Shield chasing. Little dog pick off by Rita. Lou Rita, his second interception of the ball game, his fifth on the season. George Schmidt leads the club with six, but Lou Rita just snuck out of his uh, strong safety spot. Yagello threw a floater. Rita picked him off at the 48. And Scully, three minutes, 57 seconds, second quarter. Rick will turn it up, and good gain on first down. Looks like Scully isn't picking up a lot of yardage, but that play he picks up five, bring up a second and five. Steve. Scully brings him up. Key in there, and a great offensive guard for Malolo. Counter option. Phelan. Breaks one tackle, still on his feet, diving down to the 33. He has a first down. Brian Black, number 32, a junior, six foot, 190 pounder, makes a hit. First and 10, 114, second quarter. Option, Scully. Fake the Phelan, Rick will turn it up at the six. Still moving down to the five, drop at the four. Rick Scully. Triple option quarterback in high school for Tom Coder at nearby Christiana. A great runner at Christiana High School. Dan Reeder was one of his backfield mates for the Vikings. Timeout Delaware with 103 second quarter. They're on the move at the five with a first and goal. That's the distance for Rick Scully and company. First and goal inside the five. One minute, second quarter. Merkliner, John with trouble. He will lose about six yards back to his 11. 
John Merkler buried by Jerome Waters. Number 36, the left cornerback. Hens need another timeout. Rick Scully will go over and talk things over with Tubby Raymond and Ted Kemsky. Second and goal, Blue Hens. 55 seconds left. Play action, Scully setting. Going to the right sidelines. Great play down there. Kevin Phelan was the intended receiver, but Mims Hackett came up with the right hand to knock it down inside the end zone, a sophomore, number 18. Don Spar has checked in for Rick Scully. Ends up one timeout, 51 seconds remain second quarter. This is a third and goal call for Phelan. Little counter, Kevin, yes! Phelan, his sixth touchdown of the season, totaling 38 points on the year. Also has a PAT on the season. Kevin Phelan makes it 32 to seven Blue Hens, mixing up the William and Mary defense there on a counter on third and goal from the 11th. And Steve, speaking of extra points, Delaware, I'm sure is hoping that this one will be successful. The last two have not. Hens will go for two, Rick Scully back in there. 